Welcome back to our beginner's guide. Two videos left for the CSS part of the series. In this video, it's time to talk about the viewport meta tag and about media queries because we want to make our site a little bit more responsive. Before we dive into the basics of responsive design, let me fix one mistake I did in the last video, because right here with our fallback for the font size of our page title, I added 16 pixels. Well, if one RAM is 16 pixels, then two RAM shouldn't be 60, but 32 pixels, just to make sure that this is correct. Now back to our website and now back to responsive design. And before we dive deeper, let me change one thing. Because at the moment I'm viewing this website right here with a zoom level of 200%, just to make sure that you can see all the details. The problem is that we will work a lot with our page width in that video. And because of the zoom level of 200%, this would mean that a width of 1000% pixels right here would be a width of 500 pixels in our code. And I think this can be confusing. Therefore, I'll reduce the zoom level right here to 100%. So basically, I won't have any zoom in here. And with that, we can make sure that the pixels we can see right here for our page width are equal to the pixels that we have in our code. Now that we talked about that, we can see that we already have kind of a responsive design. We can see that down here in the footer, right here, we see that the way the images and the text is displayed changes. That's simply due to our flex box that we implemented. Because we here have our display flex uh, declaration with the flex wrap and the wrap value applied. And we have a width defined for 120 pixels for the images and for 350 pixels for the text. This means as soon as we are below these values, the way the content is displayed changes to this part. We got another, well, kind of responsive design already up here for our images also, because as you can see, as soon as we are below, here is 400 pixels. Can you see it right here? So 400 right here. And if we go below that, then the way these images are displayed also changes. This is due to our flex box also, which we applied right here. So display flex, flex wrap. And we defined a width of 50%, but additionally, a minimum width of 200 pixels. Therefore, if we reduce the width of our page below 400, well, there is not enough space for two images with 200 pixels of width for each. Therefore, it is displayed like that with a wrap. So this is what our, let's call it responsive design, looks like at the moment in our desktop view. That's really important because at the moment we are just playing around with the width in our desktop browser. Now the problem is that, well, this behavior right here cannot be observed if we have a look at our mobile browser or at least at the simulated mobile browser. Because if we increase the size maybe and now click right here in the Chrome developer tools, we can see that we can increase that a little bit more even. We can select different devices. Let me maybe select an iPhone 8 right here. And as you can see right here, well, although we have a width of only 375 pixels, which would be below these 400 pixels, two times 200 for the width of the images that we defined, the site is still squeezed into that mobile phone screen in the desktop view. The reason for that is that our mobile browser is not aware of the actual device width of our device and therefore doesn't adjust the viewport to that size. And because of that, our site looks like this and doesn't look like that on our mobile phone because we should actually expect that with a width of 375 pixels, it's 373 now, but basically it should look like that actually. And as I said, this is due to the fact that the mobile browser is not aware of the device width and cannot adjust the viewport according to that. The good news is that we can easily adjust that by simply going back to our code, but this time to the index.html file, and now add a specific meta tag. It's called meta name. Now it's interesting, it's viewport. 
So that's the first step. Now we need to define one more thing. And this second thing is the content, which should be equal to width equals device width, like that. Now, what did we write right here? Well, basically what I just talked about. With that, we tell our browser that the viewport should be equal to the width right here of the device we are using. So if we save that and go back to our page and reload it, we can now see that our mobile browser is now able to identify the actual device width of our iPhone 8 right here, which is 375 pixels. Well, and then the browser knows that he should keep a minimum width of 200 pixels for each of these pictures. Well, and because of that, he knows that he has to switch the view to that view that we defined so far in our basic responsive design. This is really important. Always make sure to add this meta tag with the viewport and content width equals device width to your HTML file. There are more things you could specify right here, but we'll just focus on the basics in this video. Well, and with that, if we go back to the desktop view, we can see that we have a really good responsive design now on our website. That's not true, of course. This was just the starting point actually, because with that we now made sure that our browser is aware of the device size and adjusts the viewport according to that. Now we have to work with this information and think about the consequences. This means we can now specify what should happen to the way our website is displayed depending on specific, well, borders we can specify. We could, for example, say that as soon as our device has a width of 400 pixels or more, then the way our elements are positioned should change or the font size should change, for example. Basically, you can change almost any property now. And you can change these properties depending on the device size by using media queries. Now, this can sound really complicated and confusing now. Therefore, as always, let's think about that step by step. And before we think about that, mm, I have to admit that we made a mistake right here. No worries, the site is totally fine, no big issue. But the way we develop this website is actually not according to the standards nowadays. Because as we have a lot of different devices on the market, well, one of the most important devices is of course the mobile phone. Therefore, normally developing a website should always work with the general rule of mobile first. So you start building your website based on the way it should look like on the mobile phone. And then you think about how the site should adjust as soon as you have bigger devices. The good news is that we can do this now by working with media queries. So let's dive into that. And as I just said, we want to work mobile first now to make our site responsive. And because of that, we should think about the smallest device size we want to build our website for. Let's say that this could be 300 pixels. So right here, uh, 301, I think this is fine. But let's say 300 pixels should be the smallest device. So this is our starting point where we want to develop our website for. And at the moment, it doesn't look good right here. So this means we have to go back to our code because that's important, keep that in mind. With the mobile first approach, this is now the code that is responsible to make sure that this page is displayed correctly. And this means we have to change some things. The first thing we should change is maybe the width of these images because as we can see right here, these are too small. So we can get rid of that minimum width right here now and say that the width should be 100% for our images, like that. Yeah, now this looks better. However, I still think that the home and contact buttons right here don't look good because the font of home and contact or the font size is a little bit too big. So we should also work on that. Let's see, this is the navigation. So we have to work in the or on the navigation class. So let's go back, go to navigation and to the navigation list items to be more precise. And let's maybe change the font size to 0.9 rem, something like that. And let's reload the page. Yeah, and with that, as I said at the beginning, I'm sorry, I hope you can see it now, but I have to keep it that small. As you can see now, our website now has a good look actually on this really small device. 
The issue still is that we have this MySF city trip and this the California landscape text right here. And I think this should not be displayed on such a small device. So let's say we don't want to display this information right here on our really small device. We can also change that by, oh no, I forgot the part to be honest. I think it's the main part right here and the trip text class, that's it. So let's go to trip text right here. And let's now comment out all that part because we will need it later for the media queries. So if we now save that and go back to our website and reload it. Yeah, we can see we still have that text in here. So let's add trip text right here. And now simply say display none. Therefore, we now made sure if we load the page that it is not displayed right here. So with that, we now have our base set. So we have the mobile first approach for our smallest device. And I think until right here, it looks good. But for example, you could now say that you would like to change the way the website is displayed right here at 400 pixels. Let's say you want to increase the size of these home and context buttons so of the font. And this can now easily be done by using media queries. So let's go back to our code and let's now add such a media query. And I normally add these queries at the bottom of the CSS code because with that you can easily see and immediately see what type of media queries were applied. And the media query is simply written like that. So add media, make sure to check out the MDN. I added the link in the video description because you can specify, well, specific media where this should only be applied to. In our case, add media simply means in general that from whatever medium you access this website from, this media query will be applied if, that's now the if, if the min width, so the device width, is 400 pixels, as we just said. Now we can add the curly braces right here. And now we have to specify what should happen. So what happens if we have a look at our website with a device that has a minimum width or a width of at least 400 pixels. We said that we want to change the font size of the navigation items. So this navigation li right here. So what we can now simply do is we can now simply select everything, copy it, now paste it right here and now get rid of all the properties that should not change. That's really important because we only want to change a specific property in this media query. In our case, this is the font size. Now we could also adjust the fallback for the simplicity of this tutorial. I will not adjust it now, but you could also do that of course. But I will just stick to the font size, which could now be, let's say, 1.2rem, like that. If we save that and go back to our website and reload it, can you see it? The font size now increased because if we decrease the size, it jumps back to our initial size. And as soon as we hit that border, we can see that our font size adjusts according to the new font size that we defined with that media query. And that's really important to keep in mind. With that media query, you can start building your website mobile first. So just as we did it now, we just had a look at the smallest device we want to build our website for. And then you specify media queries for certain breaking points. For example, in our case, the min width of 400 pixels. And then only specify the properties of specific selectors, elements, classes, anything like that, and define what should happen as soon as this case is true. Now, of course, there is not only min width available. You could also use max width, for example. Again, have a look at the link I provide in the video description to the MDN. But from a mobile first starting point, this is probably the easiest way to start with. Just start with the smallest device and then use min width to adjust the way your website looks depending on the device size. However, we are not done yet because so far we can see that our website looks fine right here. But I think as soon as we hit maybe 500 pixels or let's maybe check it out. Let's have a look at a specific device. Let's make it bigger. Let's see what an iPad looks like. Yeah, I think for example on an iPad, our website could be viewed in the desktop view. 
So we could now also specify that, let's maybe say, as soon as we have a minimum width of 700 pixels, our website should change back to the normal desktop view. So basically to the view we had in the beginning, because right now, as you can see, we only have our mobile view right here. And I don't think this looks really good on a desktop device. So let's reduce the size and let's go back to our code and let's now simply add another media query. So you can just copy that right here and now say that now the min width is 700 pixels. And now really important, just take the trip images right here. So this width, you can copy everything actually, copy it down, paste it right here. Don't forget to close the curly braces of the media query. And now you want to say that, well, as soon as our device has a minimum width of 700 pixels, well, our, we don't need the height, by the way, can't get rid of that. Our width should not be 100% anymore, but it should be 50% like that. If we go back to our website and reload it, well, we can see that as soon as we hit 700 pixels right here, the way our site is displayed changes. And again, based on that media query. So you can see for our initial site right here, we have the normal view. Then we have the 400 pixels where the home and contact font size increases. And then we have our 700 pixels where suddenly the entire look of our website changes. Now there is one thing we forgot, right? We had these headers right here. Let's also add these. That's why I commented them out right here. Because if we now simply cut these out from here and now add them to our media query, as you can see, you can also combine different selectors in here and get rid of the commented out part like this, just some basic formatting right here and like that maybe, and also get rid right here and put it right there so that it looks nice. Well, maybe add a line right here. Well, and then with this code being added, this simply means that as soon as our device has a width of at least 700 pixels, well, this should all be true. Now let's see if that happens. So we reload the page. And indeed, now we can see that our MySF city trip and the California landscape text is back again. And if we reduce the size, can you see it? It switches to our mobile view. And if we reduce it further, the font size decreases. And with that, can you see it? We basically have a nice responsive design, as I would say. Not a really sophisticated one, of course, but I think for the basic steps you applied, this is really awesome. You can now also switch to the different mobile devices right here. So the iPad has a desktop view, so has the iPad Pro. But on the iPhone X, for example, we have the mobile view, and so do we have it on the Galaxy S5 and on all the other devices that we have right here. So this is quite cool actually, as I think, and as you could see, it was really easy to implement. There are only two things that you have to keep in mind. The first thing is always add the viewport meta tag right here. We talked about that. With that, you basically explain your mobile browser that your device has a certain width and that the viewport should be adjusted according to that width. With that basic information in mind or stored for the browser, we can then work on the media queries and add these queries down here for specific device sizes. Additionally, keep in mind that if you build mobile first, the entire code you have right here should refer to your mobile, so to the smallest device you want to create your code for. And in the combination with the media queries down here, you can then tailor specific properties according to the needs that you have on the bigger devices that you may have. And with that, we now actually also have our first responsive design implemented. Now, as I said in the beginning, we have two videos left for our CSS part of the series. This was video one. In the second video, so in the next video, we will then clean up our website a little bit because we might want to work on some font sizing topics maybe, or we could also work on the contact page because right now, well, I don't think this looks really cool. So as always, I can only say thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.